Hello, George Crum here. Welcome to the third annual Think Outside Virtual Outdoor Show. In this seminar, we're going to talk about the non-slip loop knot. The non-slip mono loop knot is a very versatile knot that you can use for everything from still water fly fishing for trout to saltwater trolling for salmon. And, and uh, the only thing that changes is the scale of the knot itself. I'm going to tie it first using this paracord so that you can better see how the knot is constructed. And then I'll tie it onto a BNR twitching jig. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind with this knot is you can vary the size of the loop. You want the loop to be big enough so that the lure or fly can freely swing on the, on the loop, but not so big that it affects the overall appearance of the presentation. That becomes more critical the smaller the lure is. For instance, with a size 12 chronomid pupa imitation, I want a pretty small loop. I'll show you how to vary the size of the loop. Here the knot is in general. You're gonna start, if this is your main line, this would go to the rod tip, this would go to your lure. And the first thing that we do is we tie a simple over knot, overhand knot in the material like this. Next, I would then slip the hook eye through the line or the split ring or the welded ring of a spoon or something like that. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to tie it without a hook or anything. So here we have our uh, overhand knot. We're going to take the tag end and we're going to feed it through that overhand knot the same way that it's coming out. For instance, if you look closely here, you can see that the way I'm holding it, this tag end is coming out the bottom of the loop. We're going to go back in the bottom of the loop, like so. Then we're going to take this tag end and wrap it two or three times around the main line. Okay, looks like so. Now we're going to take the tag end and we're going to slip it between the loop that we just formed and the line that just came in. So if you watch closely, I'm going to slip it in like that. So it's not going through the center of everything, it's going through the side of the knot, and then we're going to pull it tight. And when it snugs up, you have your loop and you'll notice that the tag end is actually pointing towards the lure. That's as it should be. It shouldn't be pointing straight out to the side or, in this case, straight up in the air. The reason you want it that way is if you're fishing a fly through weedy water or something like that, the tag end is less likely to catch debris in the water. Uh, trout don't like it if there's any bit of weeds on your fly. It doesn't really matter for a bigger presentation like a spoon or a twitching jig like we're going to use in a minute, but uh, it does matter for the fly presentation. And the overall beauty of this is with this loop here, the fly is free to wobble in virtually any direction. If you're fishing a chronomid under an indicator, the, the waves from the wind will actually make your fly kind of dance around in different directions, making it appear more lifelike. They really like that. A little anecdote on that, I took a guy fishing Stillwater one time and I, I told him that he should use a non-slip mono loop knot. He was insistent on using his favored clinch knot or whatever it was, but it was a non-loop knot. We were fishing chronomid pupa under an, indicator, under an indicator and in the course of an afternoon, uh, the two of us that were fishing with the loop knot landed roughly 25 fish. Our buddy fishing a fixed knot with no loop landed zero. He didn't get a bite. And he was an experienced stillwater angler, so he became a believer that day in the non-slip mono loop knot. I mentioned earlier that you can vary the size of the overall loop that you wind up with this knot, and I'm going to show you some examples of that right now. So we start our, our knot just as we always do. We thread it through like, like I explained previously. We do our wraps, and what's going to determine the size of your loop is how much line you have beyond it on the hook side, as well as the size of your overhand knot. If you tie a very large overhand knot like this, you're going to wind up with a bigger loop than if you tie an overhand knot like this to begin with. I'll show you what I mean. Now, to, to keep this loop, on this side, to be roughly that size, I don't pull on this, the standing portion of the line, I pull on the tag end primarily. 
and you'll see that the, if anything, the loop actually gets a little smaller. For small presentations like flies, that's generally better. Now I'll tie one with a much larger loop. Everything starts out the same, same old overhand knot. In this case, I'm going to make the overhand knot larger. Makes the whole thing kind of harder to tie, actually. And I'm going to pull, and you'll see that I wind up with a little bit larger loop than I did the last time. You can vary this tremendously if you want to. I tend to, when I tie this knot, I tie the smallest knot that I can, the smallest loop that I can, which still allows the lure or the fly to freely move. Okay, so now we're going to tie the non-slip mono loop knot using a piece of 12 pound test fluorocarbon leader material and uh, being our twitching jig. This knot works really well for any um, lure that you tie to the end of your leader that's designed to wobble or that you want to freely move around at the end of the line. We start with our normal overhand knot as I showed you with the paracord. I like to make this fairly small and as you can see it's probably about a quarter of an inch in diameter. If I was tying a fly I'd probably make it even smaller than that. We've got about two and a half inches of tag end sticking out. I'm going to thread that through the eye of the twitching jig. I'm going to thread that up through the overhand knot. And I know this is difficult to see. What I'm doing now is I'm cheating the overhand knot down towards the eye of the hook. And I'm going to hold it there. I'm just going to grab the whole thing and hold it so it can't move. And I'm going to take my tag end and wrap it around the main line. In this case, when I'm using 12 pound test, I'm going to go around three times. If I was using 3X fluorocarbon tippet for a fly, I'd go around two times. That's enough, I've found. I'm going to wet it. Then I'm going to, still holding it, I'm going to thread that tag end through the side of the overhand knot. A lot easier to do when I'm wearing my glasses. Once I have it through there, I'm going to grab it with my teeth. And pull tight. And I pull mostly on the tag end. And what I wind up with is this. A very small loop that my twitching jig is attached to that allows this jig to freely wobble in any direction that it needs to wobble. You notice that the tag end is pointing basically down towards the lure. I'll clip that off eighth of an inch or so from the knot itself. And uh, that's basically the non-slip mono loop knot. It's surprisingly strong. I've, I've, I've never had the knot actually fail when, it, when the tippet wasn't damaged or the leader wasn't damaged. It's a, it's a strong knot. You, you can have confidence that it's going to hold any fish that you hook as long as you're uh, using the appropriate strength of leader material. <laughs>